Last February 17th, the U.S. State Department and its embassy in Havana communicated for the first time to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Cuba and its embassy in Washington the occurrence of alleged acoustic attacks from November 2016 through February 2017. According to the U.S. authorities, such incidents were created through long-range sonic devices with negative effects on the health condition of diplomatic agents from that mission and their families. The definition of acoustic attack corresponds to the emission of high decibel sounds to elicit various physical and cognitive reactions aimed at controlling an individual using non-lethal weapons or devices available in the market. That technology is not present in Cuba and the commercial importation of any devices with such capabilities is forbidden. Consequently, its introduction in the national territory could only take place illegally. From the moment the Cuban authorities received the first report, they committed to making a serious analysis of the information provided by U.S. officials. As directed by the top leadership of the Cuban government, a thorough investigation ensued that included a number of legal, expert, technical and operational actions intended to clearing up the alleged events in an uncharted area since there's no precedent for such aggressions in Cuba or anywhere else in the world. In accordance with Cuban criminal law proceedings, the competent authorities opened and registered investigation file number 10-17 with the purpose of investigating a possible crime described as action against leaders and representatives of foreign diplomatic missions. Se han desarrollado un grupo de acciones de intrusión, entre ellas la toma de declaraciones de testigos de residentes en las zonas colindantes con los lugares de ocurrencia de los hechos, la emisión de despacho a diferentes instituciones para que nos certificaran asuntos de interés de la investigación, las mediciones del espectro radioelectrónico y sonoro en las zonas de ocurrencia, así como la toma de muestras específicamente sonoras en esos mismos ambientes. De igual manera, se realizaron una vez que las autoridades de los Estados Unidos entregaron muestras de las, eh, que habían sido recogidas por ellos en la ocurrencia de los hechos, se le aplicaron dictámenes periciales a dichas muestras. A standing working group involving various specialties of the Ministry of the Interior was established to direct the investigation process, as well as a committee of experts in acoustics from the Ministry of Science, Technology and Environment and the Public Health Ministry. In light of the problem raised by the U.S. officials, the government of Cuba, in compliance with the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, immediately stepped up security measures designed to prevent any action on American diplomats. Sobre este particular, en los intercambios con funcionarios de la Embajada de Estados Unidos han reconocido que aprecian el incremento de las medidas de seguridad y protección. Solicitaron que se mantuvieran en función de garantizar la tranquilidad de sus funcionarios y diplomáticos en nuestro país. One of the pieces of information provided by the U.S. State Department through a diplomatic note indicated that the alleged sonic attacks originated with long-range acoustic equipment but failed to offer any further data. However, neither new information nor any other element came up during the investigation undertaken by the Cuban authorities, pointing to the presence in the country of sound emission equipment like the one described by the U.S. authorities. Despite reinforcement of fur and sea borders in coordination with Cuba's General Customs Authority, the Cuban officials detected neither intention nor plans to introduce such technology in the national territory. The government of the United States has publicly stated that its diplomats have shown a number of symptoms such as nausea, dizziness, facial and or abdominal pain, hearing impairment, cognitive problems and even brain damage. All of this sustained in very different spaces and circumstances. This leads to the assumption that multiple devices must have been used. Renowned world scientists, authors of numerous investigations related to sound issues in areas like medicine and physics, have raised different hypotheses that question the occurrence of alleged acoustic attacks. These experts, working for prestigious academic institutions and research centers, considered it unlikely that the large variety of reported symptoms are triggered by an unknown equipment and explain that the incidents described cannot possibly cause brain damage. They argue that hearing loss can only result from exposure to audible sounds and that there's no medical precedent for this condition caused by inaudible sounds 
as U.S. authorities and media outlets repeatedly claim. They affirm that no infrasonic weapon exists that can produce the described symptoms, as proven in animal experiments, and that such damages could only result from the use of large and powerful equipment that would necessarily affect several people within a certain range and not selectively as alleged. Despite the alleged health damages, none of the U.S. Embassy officials visited the health care centers where they usually receive medical care. Y hasta ahora ninguna unidad eh, nuestra de nuestro sistema de salud, ningún paciente nos ha llegado con esa sintomatología asociado a que se ha sido supuestamente agredido por un arma sonora. Como parte de las acciones de instrucción desarrolladas, se recibió respuesta de la Dirección Municipal de Salud del de municipio de Playa, donde certificaron que no habían sido atendidos pacientes por patologías que pudieran asociarse con ataques acústicos o con ruidos anómalos de altos decibeles. Además, se revisó si alguna de las, de las personas residentes en los alrededores de las viviendas donde se supuestamente estaban ocurriendo estos ataques hubieran sido afectados, atendidos en sus áreas de salud con resultados negativos. The investigation has included interviews with 20 neighbors of the supposedly attacked diplomats. This affirmed that they have neither heard strange noises nor experienced any health or hearing problems similar to those reported by the American diplomats. Yo no tengo conocimiento de que ninguna de las personas hayan dejado de dormir o que tengan tratamiento médico por problemas auditivos o por problemas que por tantos decibeles altos ocasione daños a la salud. Todos los testigos que fueron atraídos a este proceso para la toma de declaración fueron sometidos igualmente a un examen médico eh, minucioso, resultando que ninguno tuvo afecciones de salud auditiva que pudieran relacionarse con los hechos que estábamos investigando. Como parte del trabajo de nuestro equipo se les realizaron pruebas audiométricas, o sea, audiometría tonal liminal, a las personas vecinas de los supuestamente implicados en la afección auditiva. Eh, dichas pruebas auditivas, eh, ninguna dio positivo de un trauma acústico, o sea, esa curva audiométrica fue negativa para trauma acústico. Ninguno de los pacientes estudiados o de las personas estudiadas tenía trauma acústico. Por otra parte, se realizó también el eh, reflejo estapedial y todos fueron también negativos. Experts find it is odd that the nearest neighbors have not been affected or even perceived the alleged noises. Después de 90 decibeles, para que una persona en el interior de una vivienda o de un local eh, llegue más de 90 decibeles, quiere decir que su entorno, su exterior, tiene que tener o, eh, un número mayor en la frecuencia auditiva. ¿Qué es lo que estamos diciendo con esto? Que quiere decir que no solamente sería afectado a la persona que está en una vivienda o en un local o en otro sitio cualquiera donde fuera eh, rodeado, por decirlo de alguna manera, de paredes, sino que todo el entorno, todas las personas que se inculcitan, que están en el medio exterior, se también sufriría. Mindful of international standards, the team of acoustic experts took a number of measurements of environmental noise at different times of day in the residential areas where the American diplomats live. Nevertheless, they failed to find any anomaly. Also, the Central Criminalistics Laboratory of the Ministry of the Interior performed lengthy verification of acoustic surveillance and environmental noise randomly recorded. The result of all of this were within normal parameters. The limited cooperation of the United States included the belated transfer of some sound samples supposedly connected to the reported events. The experts conducted a thorough examination of this and issued the corresponding ruling. In the analysis we did of the signals of the three recordings that were not given to the supposed acoustic attacks, there is no doubt in that the people who performed this recording were not subjected to any elevated acoustic pressure to the level of the acoustic 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 que para que pueda haber daño a las personas hay niveles, eh, por supuesto, de más de 80 decibeles, 90 decibeles, 100 decibeles de, de señal. Los niveles que nosotros logramos medir están en el orden de los 74 decibeles aproximadamente. Y ese nivel no toma la zona de los daños auditivos traumáticos. Porque para que haya un daño traumático permanente hacen falta niveles sobre los 120, 130 decibeles.
Pero a todas luces, por lo que está en la grabación, los niveles sonoros no se aproximan ni remotamente a los niveles que darían un daño de la audición. The parameters of the American Academy of Otorhinolaryngology and Head and Neck Surgery concerning damage to humans exposed to acoustic weapons are in a range of intensity above 90 decibels. The sound level in the audio samples received does not exceed that level, as corroborated by experts, technicians and scientists. Although, after exhaustive analysis, the use of technical means to deliberately carry out the alleged attacks could not be corroborated, the recordings exhibited coincidences with the sounds emitted by some insects, especially crickets and cicades. Hicimos una prueba, tomamos una grabación en un parque de nuestra capital y caracterizamos, aplicamos las mismas técnicas de procesamiento digital que aplicamos con las muestras de audio que nos entregaron al sonido que grabamos de la cigarra. Y eh, coincidentemente pudimos comprobar que también es un sonido que está sobre los 7 kilos ciclo, que tiene un ancho de banda aproximadamente igual sobre los 3 kilos y que audiblemente es muy parecido. Hicimos también eh, comparación de espectros, o sea, comparamos los espectros de, de todas las señales aportadas con el espectro que grabamos y evidentemente este ruido común es muy parecido al ruido de, de una cigarra. These insects live in rural and urban coastal area throughout the Cuban archipelago, as determined through a field test in the vicinity of the U.S. diplomats' residences. American researchers recognize that the noise caused by a concentration of these insects can reach 90 decibels, while a similar concentration of crickets could produce noise with an intensity of 95 decibels. In both instances, a long exposure to such sounds could lead to hearing loss, irritation and hypertension. The Cuban investigators carried out a profound study which proved the similarity between the sound samples delivered by the Americans and the noise produced by these insects. This result they passed on to their American counterpart as a probable cause of some of the acoustic incidents reported. Up to now, the United States has failed to react to the information provided by Cuba. However, U.S. authorities, cited by international media outlets under condition of anonymity, have indicated that the alleged sounds are similar to the noise produced by the above-mentioned insects. Two other supposedly acoustic attacks were reported on April 25th. This time, the American officials informed the Cuban foreign minister of some attacks in two rooms of the Capri Hotel, one occupied by an American diplomat and the other one by one of the physicians who came to the island to check on the hypothetical victims of the alleged incidents. Although several days passed from the alleged events and their denunciation by the U.S. diplomats, the Cuban authorities proceeded to investigate. They searched not only those rooms, but also adjacent and distant areas and rooms, but again failed to find any physical trail or material evidence relevant to the investigation. The management and service staff, as well as various guests, stated that they had not heard any unusual sound or showed any symptoms of exposure to noises. As part of this analysis, sound samples were taken in a predominantly quiet environment. The specialist also corroborated that windows of the room are hermetically closed. Other experiments, consisting in the emission of higher frequency and more powerful sounds than those contained in the audio samples submitted by the United States, confirmed that they were not audible inside either of the two rooms. In the radio of the zones exterior to the installation, de hasta 150 metros no existe ningún, ninguna edificación al nivel de las habitaciones que permita colocar una fuente sonora eh, e incluso a potencias de 120 decibel que ya son potencias eh, consideradas dañinas, no sea para el oído humano eh, que pueda llegar a registrarse con la ventana cerrada en estas habitaciones y provocar contaminación acústica dañina para eh, los huéspedes. A supposedly uncertain situation of aggressions against U.S. diplomatic agents in Havana should have led to the adoption of measures in the interest of the security and protection of its personnel, including the restriction of their movement in the national territory and the limitation of trips to Cuba by officials and their relatives.
However, quite the opposite happened. An example of this is that from the day after the first report on February 17th, when they first communicated the alleged acoustic attacks, and until the 26th of that month, the American diplomats made 15 trips outside the capital for leisure activities. Additionally, from February through June, the U.S. Embassy applied for 293 visas, 158 of them for friends or relatives of accredited diplomats with whom they freely traveled throughout the country. One of the circumstances that eh, llamó la attention desde the inicio fue que al momento de denunciarse estos hechos por la embajada de los Estados Unidos, el jefe del Departamento de Seguridad y Diplomática llamó a una entrevista al jefe del área de seguridad de esa sede y al indagar con él sobre la ocurrencia de los hechos en función de precisar datos para poder desarrollar nuestra investigación, resultó que este funcionario desconocía la ocurrencia de esos hechos. Es muy significativo por dos razones fundamentales. Una, resultó posteriormente que ese funcionario, jefe del área de seguridad, que desconocía la ocurrencia de los hechos, fue reportado como uno de los atacados. Y la segunda, de tanta importancia como la primera, es que desconocía la ocurrencia de los ataques contra sus funcionarios y familiares, cuando su función en Cuba es precisamente preservar a estos funcionarios y familiares. At this stage of the investigation, it became evident that the U.S. authorities were unwilling to cooperate in the clarification of the events. They neither facilitated the transfer of the necessary information nor cooperated with the investigation efforts of the Ministry of the Interior. Actually, only belatedly the Cuban investigators had access to the presumably targeted residences and received new samples of alleged sonic attacks. Las autoridades de los Estados Unidos responsabilizaron a Cuba con la investigación, determinación y eliminación de estos hechos sin asumir la responsabilidad plena que le corresponde como país afectado en participar en la investigación. No han dado acceso ni a los investigadores ni a los hechos porque lo informaron meses, días y horas después de ocurrido ni a las víctimas ni a los testigos. No hay cómo conocer lo que pueda eh, aportar una víctima de cómo ocurrieron los hechos sin entrevistarlo. No obstante a ello, las autoridades de los Estados Unidos no han accedido ni a que entrevistemos a las víctimas y tampoco siquiera a aportarnos las declaraciones que se le pidieron que le tomaran ellos, no solo para su utilización en el sentido estricto de la investigación policíaca, sino también para aportarlas a los expertos, a los científicos, a los especialistas que pudieran analizar lo que estas víctimas referían sobre la ocurrencia de los hechos denunciados. The American diplomats supposedly affected by the sonic attacks were the main source of evidence for the Cuban experts to evaluate as they seek for the truth about the event. However, the U.S. government denied access to these people and moved them to its territory, thus preventing an expert analysis. The United States did not facilitate an exchange between Cuban scientists and investigators and the State Department medical team that visited our country to assess the supposed damages caused to the diplomats. Nosotros estuvimos todo el tiempo dispuestos a atender a esos pacientes, a encontrar, a investigar qué era lo que había pasado. Eh, tenemos los recursos para hacerlo. Eh, el sistema de salud cubano cuenta con todos los recursos pero realmente eh, la cooperación fue nula y solamente hemos tenido eh, comunicaciones eh, que en nuestro criterio no son expertas sobre lo que había sucedido. On the other hand, the medical conclusions submitted by the American authorities after the evaluation of 20 people that supposedly sustained health damages from exposure to intensive noises is a one-page general report lacking the indispensable technical elements expected of such documents. Toda la investigación que hemos tenido que realizar ha sido a partir de datos incompletos. No hemos tenido eh, realmente eh, una información que sea científica y fidedigna para nosotros poder eh, llegar a una conclusión en cualquier sentido. Lo único que hemos recibido de, o sea, de la contraparte han sido dictámenes nada específicos, 
se realizaron estudios vestibulares, estudios audiométricos, pero ¿dónde están los estudios? ¿Dónde están los resultados de esos estudios? Si nosotros no vemos los estudios, no vemos el resultado de los estudios, ¿cómo podemos hablar que existió tal daño o que no existió? No tenemos una base científica ni una base sólida para poder dar un diagnóstico. Tampoco hemos tenido la posibilidad de hacerle un examen físico, otorrinolaringológico y además de manera general y no conocemos todo el entorno eh, eh, sanitario que rodea a estas personas. A repeated issue during the entire process was the belated reporting of the alleged events, even though the Diplomatic Security Division of the Ministry of the Interior provided five telephone numbers for the exclusive use of the U.S. Embassy in Havana to notify any incident directly. Las autoridades de los Estados Unidos han informado todos los hechos de manera tardía y parcial. El 25 de abril informaron de un hecho ocurrido supuestamente 30 días antes, el 30 de marzo. El 6 de abril a las 14 horas, la embajada informó de un hecho ocurrido supuestamente en horas de la noche del día antes. Cuando nuestras fuerzas se personaron en el lugar para realizar la investigación, no les permitieron acceder ni a las víctimas ni al interior del lugar del hecho. Con ello obstaculizaron el desarrollo de las acciones policíacas que corresponden para un esclarecimiento a pesar de lo tardía de la información. Although the alleged acoustic attacks related to a fuel and technology unknown in the island, the U.S. authorities have not agreed to the Cuban proposal to have experts of the two countries exchange on the subjects at the tactical level, nor have they favored the use of their technologies in the area of sound and infrasound recordings. It is paradoxical that the United States has declined full cooperation at this level, since positive experiences exist in such areas of security as counter-narcotics, money laundry and counter-terrorism, most of these from a time when there were no diplomatic relations, showing all that can be achieved when there's political will. An example of this was the bilateral cooperation established in 2013 in the area of information technologies and communication. At the time, cyber attacks launched on American military and technological facilities through Cuban computers previously controlled from overseas used the national infrastructure as a bridge to make the island appear as the perpetrator of the attack. On that occasion, technical, operational and political exchanges took place between the two nations leading to a quick unraveling of the events and to investigation efforts on the part of the U.S. authorities. Como se le ha reiterado a los funcionarios de Estados Unidos, esta es una investigación en pleno desarrollo. Pero que para que pueda llegarse a éxito eh, en la misma, es imprescindible la participación plena y responsable de las autoridades de ese país. Que permitan el acceso a sus expertos, a que han estado participando, según han, han dicho, en eh, la investigación por su parte. Que permitan acceder a la declaración de los testigos, que permitan acceder a, 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 al, al dicho real de las víctimas, sobre qué ocurrió y cuáles fueron los síntomas y demás detalles que son imprescindibles para las acciones policíacas que debe desarrollarse, además de las acciones a ejecutar por el grupo multifactorial de expertos que está eh, participando en esta investigación. Currently, after repeated requests from Cuba, only U.S. specialized agencies are collaborating in the investigation of the alleged events. So far, it has not been possible to engage the medical team that examined the alleged victims, nor their experts in technological and acoustic issues. Still, three meetings were held in the island in the months of June, August and September 2017 with American experts and their Cuban counterparts. These exchanges unfolded in a constructive and professional climate, where the U.S. team expressed its intention to work towards the establishment of a more substantial cooperation in the investigation of the alleged incidents. During the meetings, the U.S. team stated that they had no evidence to confirm the occurrence of the alleged acoustic attacks, and no hypothesis on what could have produced the health damages described by their diplomats. Even the State Department spokesperson, Heather Noward, publicly admitted that her government has been unable to determine the cause and find a culprit on the alleged sonic event. The American investigators pointed out that they do not exclude the possibility that the symptoms experienced by the diplomats resulted from other events unrelated to the so-called acoustic attacks. 
Therefore, they proceed with the investigation. They also recognize the work of Cuba in this inquiry. En los intercambios con los funcionarios de los Estados Unidos han reconocido que Cuba no tiene responsabilidad alguna en la ejecución de los ataques que ellos están denunciando. Han reconocido además que Cuba es un lugar donde históricamente han desarrollado su actividad diplomática de manera tranquila y protegida y que nuestro país siempre ha garantizado las medidas necesarias para el desarrollo de este trabajo por los funcionarios de la Embajada de los Estados Unidos en nuestro país. In the course of this process, the Cuban authorities have displayed all of their investigation capabilities based on the information provided by the United States, and found no evidence of the occurrence of the alleged acoustic attacks. It has not been possible to come up with investigation hypotheses on the source of fundamentally sensorial events, which leave neither trails nor signals. This position was backed by representatives of U.S. specialized agencies that traveled to Cuba as part of the process. It has neither been possible to identify possible authors nor person with the motive, the intent and or the means to implement this kind of action. The work conducted by the Cuban investigative team and the information passed on by the American officials have not resulted in the identification of suspicious persons or means in the places where the event supposedly happened or their surroundings. The experts' technical analysis of the sound samples submitted by the United States proved that it is impossible for this to have caused the health damages described by the diplomats. The teams of senior Cuban medical doctors and scientists involved certifies this. From the onset of the investigation and all the way through, the Cuban authorities have kept their American counterparts duly updated through verbal note presented to the U.S. Embassy and meetings with diplomats and security officials. The politicization of this issue, evidenced in the recent decision of the U.S. administration to reduce to the minimum their diplomatic personnel in Cuba and request the withdrawal of 15 officials from the Cuban embassy in Washington, in the absence of solid proof or conclusive result of the ongoing investigation, only benefits a small group of the anti-Cuban extreme right, headed by Senator Marco Rubio, who insists on a policy of hostility against the island to the detriment of a genuine national interest of the United States and the American people, which have shown support for the normalization of relations between the two countries. Recently, Marco Rubio, who opposes any rapprochement with Havana, along with four other senators, addressed a letter to Secretary of State Rex Tillerson demanding the expulsion of all Cuban diplomats from Washington as well as the eventual closing of the U.S. Embassy in Havana in retribution for the alleged acoustic attacks. The decision to cut down U.S. diplomatic personnel in Cuba was rejected by Barbara Stephenson, president of the American Foreign Service Association, with 16 South members from the American diplomats community. The official stated that the health problems described do not justify a large-scale pullout. That position has been backed by important American politicians and personalities, who call the White House reaction run and excessive as well as a return to failed Cold War policies and a response to the interests of some individuals in disrupting the process towards normalization of relations. The implementation of these measures, along with others like the indefinite suspension of bilateral meetings in the island and official delegations to Cuba, as well as restrictions of visas issued by the U.S. consulate in Havana and alerting Americans against traveling to Cuba, bring about a regression of bilateral relations since they are harmful to exchanges and cooperation in several areas of common interest, with a direct impact on limited economic relations and migration. Such situation, created in response to certain political interest, jeopardizes the preservation of the national security of both countries, for they are bound to affect agreements on migration and law enforcement with direct repercussion in the fight on transnational crimes including terrorism, drug trafficking, cyber attacks and smuggling of persons. In the course of its revolutionary history, Cuba has proved that it consistently and seriously discharges its international obligations, including the protection of all diplomats without exception. Cuba is universally recognized as a safe destination. An analysis by the Data World Company, published in early April 2017, based on travel alerts issued by the State Department in the past seven years, declared Cuba one of the safest countries for American tourism. 
At the time, the State Department did not issue any travel alert concerning security in Cuba, nor did it include the island in the list of the 25 most dangerous nations for the physical integrity of its citizens. In the past two years, following the onset of the process towards the normalization of relations, the number of Americans visitors to Cuba has increased. Over half a million have traveled this year, and this does not include Cuban residents in that country, with more than 320,000 visitors. The island would never attack or allow the use of its territory to affect diplomats or ordinary citizens from the United States or any other country. However, over 150 actions have been carried out against Cuban diplomatic missions and other targets in nearly 20 countries, including the Cuban mission to the United Nations and the then interest section of Cuban Washington. Such terrorist actions, executed by groups stationed in the continental United States, have injured or killed many Cuban diplomats. A remarkable case is that of Félix García Rodríguez, murdered in New York City on September 11, 1981. From the victory of the revolution, the island has been continuously targeted for aggressions sponsored by various U.S. administrations, which have practiced state terrorism. The sabotage of the ship La Cubre and an Encanto shopping center, the Bay of Peak mercenary invasion, and the blasting of a commercial airliner in mid-flight, as well as the bombs that blew up in various hotels and tourist facilities in the country, among many other aggressions, brought indescribable suffering to the entire people, causing the death of 3,478 persons and incapacitating life injuries to 2,099 others. Despite these continuous aggressions against the Cuban people, the revolution has always observed the principle of respect for the physical and moral integrity of all human beings. As reiterated in numerous occasions, Cuba is willing to continue engaging the United States in the discussion of bilateral issues, of course, on equal footing and with absolute respect for our sovereignty and independence. Cuba and the United States can cooperate and coexist in a civilized manner, despite their profound differences and promote the well-being of both peoples.